Sunday was the only day when the sky over the black country was free from smoke. Queen Victoria asked for the blinds of her carriage to be drawn when she passed through. Its landscape and its people have been forged out of the furnace of its own history. Even today, for people who live in other places, the black country is still a dark, ugly, industrial sprawl. There's some confusion generally about where it is. There are even Midlanders who are under the impression it's something to do with the potteries. They should know better. After all, it was the birthplace and the cradle of the Industrial Revolution. Yet black country people born and bred will argue fiercely about its boundaries. We should set that straight. The boundaries of the black country can be very strictly defined. The black country consists of, the first of all, the exposed coal field, the area where the coal lies near the surface, the exposed coal field consists of Wensbury, Darleston, Willinor, Wensfield, Bilston, Bil uh, Coesley, Tipton, Dudley, and the area of the other side of the Dudley Hill, down towards Neverton, and it peters out towards Hells Owen. Add to this the area where the coal lies deeper, the concealed coal field, you get West Bromwich, Albury, and Smedic. Now, this collection of towns forms the Black Country. The Towns on the outside of the Black Country, that is Wolverhampton, Walsall and Brummagem, are commercial centres and, strictly speaking, are not part of the Black Country. In the Middle Ages, the Black Country was an agricultural region in Staffordshire and Worcestershire, well forested with primitive coal mining and iron smelting here and there. It hadn't earned its grim nickname. It came for the most part under the jurisdiction of St Mary's Abbey at Hales Owen, owned at one time by the Bishop of Winchester, along with five manors, a few settlements, and tithes from Walsall, Wensbury, and Clent. The bishop was sitting on some pretty exciting real estate. A broad coal seam, 30 feet deep, abundant iron ore and lime, a brooding volcano. There's very little left now from those early centuries. Occasionally, timbered relics from the past show themselves to us, looking rather mystified at remaining unscathed, like buildings which survived the Blitz. Evidence of the 19th century workers, where they lived, who they were, is becoming hard to find. About 250 years ago, the first black omens occurred. The first machine powered by steam, industry revolutionized. In a very short time, the belly of the land was ripped open for the caesarean birth of the industrial revolution. Once its black heart had been slapped into life, there was no stopping it. 